What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and why? Why must everything be ruined by politics? That's right. Picard, the new Star Trek series, which drops in January, one that I was mildly excited for, has now decided to have Patrick Stewart out there running around and running on the Watch Our Television show because Drumpf. That's right. I mean, in a post-Ricky Gervais era, and that's how important Ricky Gervais's speech was, to have somebody out there, Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, out there uh, saying that the new Star Trek series will take on Trump and Brexit, I'm out. I'm out. Out. Out, 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 out. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Out, especially because it's on CBS's or like pay per view part. It's on some pay per view channel or streaming service that I have to pay for. I'm double out. Why? See, here's the frustrating thing about that. Even if the show's take on it, right? Even if the show's take on uh, Trump and, and Brexit and all this stuff is super mild and super nuanced, it's already been ruined for me. It's already over. I, I, I just, I'm not interested in anything that Patrick Stewart has to say about politics, first of all. Second of all, I'm not interested in anything Captain Picard has to say about modern politics in my space fantasy. Now, if you look at the coverage, the coverage of the media has been running with this. Of course, the Washington Times, the Daily Wire, Cosmic Book News, io9, uh, and Ars Technica reporting that it's already been renewed for season two. Now, most shows already get that renewal. I think that happened for Witcher 2 even before it aired. They already renewed it. This is kind of one of those things where like, you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. You've paid Patrick Stewart probably a gigantic sum of money. You're hoping that this will buoy your new streaming service, and you're stuck with it now. And look, Rotten Tomatoes is going to do what Rotten Tomatoes does. I promise you this. Audience scores, I think we are very close to a post-audience review world, where Rotten Tomatoes, we already know they're manipulating review scores as we saw them do with the Star Wars film. Now, I'm sure... There will be backlash for this. Now, here's Cosmic Book News on it. Stewart hates on Trump. Star Trek Picard, not like the original. Two great ways to get me to tune out. In what should come as no surprise, the upcoming CBS All Access Star Trek Picard show is nothing like the original Star Trek, The Next Generation. With Patrick Stewart F-bombing Trump as well as his home country of England. Quote, or saying, I'm sorry, the article continues, I actually canceled my subscription to CBS All Access after watching jo Jordan Peele's awful woke take on The Twilight Zone. So again, I'm not surprised that Star Trek Picard will have another Hollywood spin on a, an SJW agenda. In an interview with Variety, Patrick Stewart, who returns after 16 years to the role, says that upon first hearing about Star Trek Picard, that he wanted it nothing like Gene Roddenberry's original version of fan favorite, the Star Trek the next generation quote i think what we're trying to say is important he says the world of next generation doesn't exist anymore it's different nothing is really safe nothing is really secure that's right what you're trying to say with your hollywood uh elite multi hundred millionaire uh you know hundred million budget uh is what what the plebs should think is that what sir patrick stewart thinks Man, every time I hear Bullock's voice on American Dad now, I'm going to be rolling my eyes. I don't understand. I mean, I guess, why is it so hard to understand your position in life? Look, take a, take a, take a page out of Keanu Reeves' book. The one who shall be protected. One of hashtag our guys. You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. I don't care. How much money you make, Patrick Stewart, you are still a joker. You are a, a person that is paid to entertain. People tune into your show to be entertained, not to be preached at. I can't 
believe that this is a foreign concept for people in 2020 after we see the continuation and the continued evidence of get woke, go broke being one of the undeniable rules of entertainment in modern era. People are getting hip to this subversion, this indoctrinization, and you know, this this propaganda that these Hollywood elites want to run. And I've said a lot of words there that sound crazy tinfoil, but look how they talk to you. Look how they talk about their audience. We just talked about this with Doctor Who. You know, how are you surprised that people are getting sick of being preached at? How are you surprised that people don't give a damn what Patrick Stewart thinks they should think? He goes on to say, I explained to them all those elements of Next Generation, which belong in Next Generation, and why I didn't want to go near them again. Star Trek Picard, the interview, continues with a mention of how Stewart had a bad childhood, etc., then delves into the 79-year-old Stewart, offering that he doesn't want to adhere to Roddenberry's vision of a better world. In a way, the world of Next Generation has been too perfect and too protected, he said. It was the Enterprise. It was a safe world of respect and communication and care and sometimes fun. Boy, who wants to see that? It couldn't possibly be one of those things that led to Star Trek The Next Generation being one of the most beloved series ever. I'm sure that was completely unrelated. Picard, the Federation, a union of planets bonded by shared democratic views, has taken an isolationist turn. The new show, Stewart says, quote, was me responding to the world of Brexit and Trump and feeling, why hasn't the Federation changed? Why hasn't Starfleet changed? Maybe they're not as reliable and trustworthy as we all thought. Of course, then Stewart had to add his two cents about Brexit and Trump, which ties into the story and themes of the new show. Quote, I'm not sure which one of us is in the most trouble, he says, of Britain and the United States. Yeah, both countries are thriving, by the way. If you, if you don't listen to the Hollywood elites, I mean, well, the UK seems to have more problems probably than the United States, I would argue, given what's going on in their streets. But nonetheless, we both have our problems. That is without denial. Neither country is a ut utopious vision of perfection and never will be. But given a straw poll, I think that there aren't many countries where people would rather live. Uh, you know, the West in general, I would say. Uh, I think it's actually the UK. I think we're effed, completely effed. He points to studies predicting decades-long economic damage, inflicting the country's looming withdrawal from the EU. One, the US, he says, there is time to limit to your effed state, which is four years away. He expresses hope the United States has given us the Trump administration or the United States that has given us the Trump administration has changed, but adds he will likely get reelected. We can probably guess the interview was conducted before the recent Golden Globes. I was looking forward to Star Trek Picard with CBS All Access already renewed for season two, but now I'm having second thoughts. If anything, I'll wait for episodes to be released on CBA All Access and binge watch them in a month at the cost of only a month's subscription. And this is kind of where things are going with these I don't know. Let me let me ask you, by the way, if you're enjoying today's videos, I have to thank you all for being so aggressive and leaving likes and comments on the videos because this past week of growth has been probably the best week in a year. And that's all because of all of your support. So thank you so much. I wonder if, you know, why, what is the end game here? I think ultimately you scare more, more, way more and more subscribers. I've already decided that I'm done with Netflix. Hulu's getting very close because they're running ads on all sorts of TV shows that my wife and I watch, even though we pay for no ads anyway. And they also run the ads at a thousand decibels louder than the rest of the show, which is super annoying. As I get older, you know, I'm in my mid thirties now. As I get older, I'm finding less and less interest in television, period, uh, in movies, period. You know, I, if a movie comes out that I want to see, I'm like, eh, I'll wait for it to come out on DVD or I'll wait and I'll buy it for $4 from Amazon and I'll watch it and get on with my life. I'm just finding myself less and less inclined to give Hollywood money, less and less inclined to give Disney money, 
less and less inclined to pay 15 to $50 to go see Marvel movies as a couple with my wife. And it's mostly driven by mediocre product, preachy uh, Hollywood actors, and agenda-pushing organizations like Disney. I mean, you can make a good movie without you know, saying, well, we decided to set out, we didn't have the movie idea, but we knew we wanted a strong, powerful woman. So we decided to design the whole movie around that. Guess what? That doesn't work. Everybody can see that it's lazy script writing. Why don't you ask Charlie's Angels how that worked out for them? Why don't you ask how it's working out for the current rendition of Star Wars, which by the way, I think is still yet to cross the billion dollar mark. Get woke, go broke. Picard, I'm out. Enjoy your preaching. Enjoy telling everyone how you were right. That's fine. You won't be getting any of my money. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.